A Ukrainian drone fell on the territory of an oil depot in the town of Svetlograd in Russia's Stavropol Krai overnight on November 1, Governor Vladimir Vladimirov has claimed. Russian telegram channels posted a video showing a drone exploding at the oil depot in Svetlograd. The town of Svetlograd has around 35,000 residents and lies over 1,000 kilometers southeast of Ukraine's border in Donetsk region. No casualties or damage have been reported. Emergency services were at the scene, Vladimirov said. According to Russia's defense ministry, Russian air defenses overnight shot down 36 drones over Kursk region, 20 over Bryansk region, 12 over occupied Crimea Peninsula, 8 over Voronezh region, 4 over Oryol region, and 3 over Belgorod region. Alexander Bogomaz, Bryansk Oblast governor, claimed that a drone hit an apartment building in the city of Bryansk overnight, injuring one person. He added that emergency services are working at the scene. In total, according to local authorities, over the past evening and night, four drones were shot down over the Bryansk region. According to the Ministry of Defense, 71 drones were shot down over Russian territory over the past evening and night, in the Kursk, Bryansk, Voronezh, Oryol and Belgorod regions. Ukraine stepped up drone strikes on Russian energy facilities since the start of the year, describing these attacks as retaliation for attacks on its energy infrastructure. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko called on the United States to remove nuclear weapons from Eurasian countries in order to create conditions for dialogue. Then we will not stay on the sidelines. I am replying to those who are worried today about the fact that we have tactical nuclear weapons deployed on the territory of Belarus, Lukashenko said addressing the Minsk International Conference on Eurasian Security on Thursday. Commenting on reports about North Korean troops in Russia, he said that no one has seen any North Koreans on the front line with Ukraine and accused Western countries of inflating this fact, which may lead to escalation. They are inflating it for what? To finally put pressure on the European Union and introduce NATO troops into this conflict in Ukraine. Otherwise, there will be defeat, Lukashenko said adding that both all conflict sides should sit down at the negotiating table without any preconditions. Speaking about parliamentary election in Georgia, the Belarusian president denied Russia's interference. They say it's Russia meddling into Georgian election, but Russia has nothing to do with it, I know this very well, it had nothing to do with it, Lukashenko said. Для реальной разрядки обстановки создания условий диалога необходимо вывести американское ядерное оружие с территории стран Евразии. Этот смертоносный арсенал – анахронизм холодной Европы. Тогда и мы в стране не останемся. Это я отвечаю тем, кто сегодня переживает за то, что у нас размещено тактическое ядерное оружие на территории Беларуси. Держит и противовесов привело к деградации безопасности во всех сферах. Ну что сотворили грузины? Они хотят прозрачности в своей стране и в политике, и в экономике и так далее. Они приняли, законная власть приняла соответствующее решение на законодательном уровне. Что и при том один в один повторили то, что есть в Америке и даже мягче сделали. А они посоветовались заранее. А проснулся дядя Джо там или еще кто-то там в Евросоюзе и не так подумал, не так посмотрел. Уничтожают страну. Вот Россия и все. До России никакого отношения. Я это хорошо знаю. Не имела никакого отношения. Я извиняюсь, может что-то не так, но это уже ваше было решение. Опасно. Сегодня одна из особенностей эскалации конфликта. Почему ухватились за неких северокорейцев и прочее, хотя на линии фронта ни россияне, ни украинцы, ни мы их там не видим. А как помогает там Северная Корея, Беларусь, об этом знают только Россия и мы.
Но это грозит эскалацией. Они этот, раздувают э, э, этот факт. Они его раздувают для чего? Чтобы окончательно надавить на Европейский Союз и увести войска НАТО в этот конфликт. В противном случае будет поражение. Западной мягкой силы НКО. Елена, нам в Европе это надо? Нам это не надо. Это ни России, ни Украине, ни нам и вам тоже. Евразийскому континенту это не нужно. Но опасность велика. Поэтому сегодня, прежде чем выдвигать какие-то с одной и другой стороны концепции и, как это называется у них, план победы или еще чего-то, все это возможно, даже глупости. Но надо сесть за стол переговоров без предварительных условий. Стоит национально ориентироваться. There are three more countries that are ready to send troops to the war in Ukraine. Former U.S. State Department official David Tafuri told 24 Canal about this in a commentary. According to him, the deployment of North Korean troops in Russia confirms what the West feared, that Russia's allied countries, which are exiles, will actively help the Kremlin in the war. What we should be concerned about is that there are several other countries that are on Russia's side, particularly Iran, Syria, China, and that can help meet the need for people that can be sent to Ukraine. Tafuri also noted that the occupying country has already lost many troops on Ukrainian territory, so North Korea satisfies the need for manpower and the reputational need of Russian leader Putin to show the world that Moscow has allies. They can also provide some of the components and things that Russia needs to keep its military-industrial complex running. The real impact from a strategic point of view is probably not that significant. However, this does not mean that the DPRK does not have a combat-ready army, but it provides additional troops, the former State Department official concluded. Recall the structure of world politics is evolving in ways that challenge American global power more than at any time since the end of the Cold War. China, meanwhile, has been accused of powering Russia's war machine with substantial amounts of dual-use goods like microelectronics and machine tools, which can be used to make weapons. The US for the first time penalized two Chinese firms for supplying complete weapon systems. All three countries have denied they are providing such support. Taking stock of the emerging cooperation, a Congress-backed group that evaluates US defense strategy dubbed Russia, China, Iran and North Korea this summer as an axis of growing malign partnerships. The fear is that a shared animosity towards the US is increasingly driving these countries to work together, amplifying the threat that any one of them alone poses to Washington or its allies, not just in one region but perhaps in multiple parts of the world at the same time. And for Tehran, weighted by hefty Western sanctions and embroiled in the expanding Middle Eastern conflicts with US-backed Israel, Supplying Russia weapons is thought to potentially boost its defense sector, while its ties with Beijing and Moscow provide it with diplomatic cover.